Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure they'll be knock ring letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing, the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. What lovely weather for people on holiday, said Pat. Every summer, lots of visitors came to Greendale to walk in the hills and camp in the valley. They were talking about the visitors when Pat arrived to collect the day's post. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Fine day. Morning, Pat. Yes, and a busy one too. Plenty of post for the visitors. The Jacksons are staying up at Burkhouse Cottage. There are some letters for them, so don't forget the extra call, will you, Pat? Oh, yes, and there's a registered letter for those campers up at Southlands Farm. They'll have to sign for that. I do hope you catch them in. And a parcel for Granny Dryden. I wonder what that can be. <laughs> it's a busy time with all these people on holiday, said Pat. I'll be glad when it's my holiday. <laughs> Have a good day, Pat. I will. Cheerio. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Morning, Pat. his letters all along the valley. At Burkhouse Cottage, the Jacksons were away, but someone had left the gate open. And something unfortunate happened. By the time Peter Fogg found the sheep, it was too late. When Pat arrived with the letters, he saw the sheep in the garden and decided to help. He'd chased sheep before. Oh, 
What a mess, said Peter. I don't know what Mr Jackson will say. It isn't your fault, said Pat. People should close gates properly. I bet they won't do that again. No. Anyway, thanks for helping. Cheerio. The next stop was at Granny Dryden's cottage. She was so pleased to see her parcel, she opened it there and then. It was her new catalogue from Manchester. It was full of pictures of things to buy. Is there anything you'd like to order? Let's have a look. Ah. He chose a digital watch with a musical alarm. That's a funny watch. It doesn't look like a watch at all to me. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It doesn't even need winding. It'll help to keep me on time. Goodbye. Pat was on his way. He had to go up the hill to Intake Farm with a letter for George Lancaster. George didn't often get letters, so he was very pleased to see this one. Um, you'll be passing the campers, won't you? said George. Could you take them some eggs? Yes, that's all right. I've got a letter for them, so I'll have to stop there anyway. George went for the eggs. What beauties, said Pat. I must take care not to drop them, especially if they're all in one basket. Cheerio! Hello? Anyone at home? That's a nuisance. They must have gone off for a walk. Well, I can tuck the eggs under here. They'll be all right. But what about this registered letter? I can't leave that. It looks too valuable. And they'll have to sign for it. I wonder if Miss Hubbard knows where they've gone. Miss Hubbard's cottage was just across the field, so Pat walked over to see if she was at home. He was lucky. She'd just cycled back from the village. Pat told her about the special letter. She knew where the campers were, all right. They've gone off to see the Gategill waterfalls, she said. They asked me the way this morning. Oh, dear. That's at least six miles, and my van can't go along that old track. I'll borrow a tractor from the farm, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, I can't drive a tractor. Don't 
worry, I can. And off she went for the tractor. Pat wasn't sure that he wanted to ride on a tractor, but there was no other way. So he climbed on and off they went. It was a very exciting ride, and a rough one in places. Hold on tight. Oh, that hurts. Oh, heck. Oh. Oh, hey up. Careful. Only two more miles to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Pat was glad when they stopped, but when he climbed down, he was almost too stiff and sore to take the letter to the campers. And then they had to go all the way back again. Pat was glad when at last he got back to his van. But what was Jess looking at in the back? It was one of George Lancaster's hens. It had got in somehow and laid an egg. She'll have to stay there until tomorrow, said Pat. But the egg, the egg will do nicely for my tea. Pat was on his way home when he spotted a sheep stuck in a fence. So he stopped to let it out. I think that's my last job for today, he said. And off he went. He waved as he passed the Thompsons. They were still hard at work haymaking. Goodbye, Pat. See you tomorrow. <laughs> it was another hot day in Greendale. A very hot day. Everything was drying up. It's a real scorcher today said Pat to Jess as they drove along. Phew, I'm thirsty already. Mrs. Goggins was trying to get cool outside the post office. Morning, Pat. Isn't it hot? And we're going to be without water today. I know, said Pat. The lake's really low. They're going to turn the water off this morning. Whatever will we do? <laughs> but they can't turn off the lemonade. Here, have a drink, Pat, before you go. Ah, just what I need. Mm. My, that's good. Mm. Mm. <sighs> that's much better. Thank you. 
Well, I'll be off then. Hey, don't forget Granny Dryden's parcel. It looks like something special. I won't. And thanks for the drink. Cheerio. Pat put the parcel in the van to deliver later on. He started his round with the village letters. He met Granny Dryden out shopping and told her about the water being cut off. Well, it's a pity the old pump's not working, she said. There were plenty of dry times in my young days, and do you know it never dried up, not once. I wonder, said Pat. I wonder if Ted Glenn could mend it. I must ask him. He can fix just about anything. Morning, Pat. Morning, Mrs. Pottage. Let's see, uh, I think I have something for you today. Oh, thank you. Right, Jess, that's the village done. Now for the farms. The water was already off at Greendale Farm. Peter Fogg was drawing water for the cows from the old well. Hello, Tom. <laughs> Helping out. Hello, Pat. <laughs> Warm work, this. Still got water in the old well. Let's have a look. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Now you've done it. I wonder if I can fish it out with this hook. Ah, got it. It'll be nice and cool anyway. At least I didn't drop this down the well. It's for you. Oh, thanks. Could you drop this can of water off at George Lancaster's place? There'll be no water up there. Sure, we'll be going past there, won't we, Jess? Cheerio! Hello, Pat. Isn't this drought terrible? We haven't got a drop of water left. Don't worry, if you look in the back, I've brought you a can from Peter Fogg. He said you'd be short. Thanks, Pat. That's grand. Cheerio! Pat 
Pat remembered to call at Ted Glenn's workshop to ask if he could mend the old village pump. Hello, Ted? Anyone at home? Ah, there you are. Pat asked him about the pump. What, that old pump in the village? Well, I don't know. It's worth a try. I'll get me tools. Leave it with me. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Dee, 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 dee. Boom, 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 boom. Mrs. Thompson was enjoying a cup of tea. Pat called with a letter. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. How are you getting on? Are you out of water like everyone else? Oh, no. Our spring's still flowing. Ah, very nice, too. I wonder how Ted's getting on. There's a handyman called Ted Glenn And he's working once again He can just about fix anything You'll ever need to mend Maybe a tractor or a ladder Or a broken frying pan Just go down and see him And he'll help you if he can He'll just say, leave it with me Leave it with me I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. He'll just say, leave it with me. Leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. All the valley knows that he's the best of handy men. They all say, if you want things mended, go and see Ted Glenn, a broken clock. Or a horseshoe, or an engine in a van Just go down and see him And he'll help you if he can He'll just say, leave it with me <laughs> Leave it with me I'll try to fix that up for you As quickly as can be He'll just say, leave it with me Leave it with me I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be, he'll just say, leave it with me, leave it with me. I'll try to fix that up for you as quickly as can be. Granny Dryden was watching out for Pat. He brought her a can of water as well as a parcel. Um, remember what you said about the old pump? Well, Ted's mended it. It's going a treat. When she opened the parcel, she discovered it was Pat's new digital watch, which she had ordered for him from Manchester. Pat was very pleased with it. I'll always be on time now, he said. Thank you for getting it for me. Uh, I'll bring the money tomorrow. Look after yourself. Goodbye. Pat had kept a can of water for himself, too. 
Jess kept a sharp eye on it. <laughs> he didn't want another wetting, no matter how hot it was. It was a windy day in Greendale. Hang on, Jess. It's a difficult job driving in this wind. Help! I can't see! Alf Thompson was nearly blown off his feet. Look out! <laughs> hmm, how are we going to get past this lot? said Pat. Oh, hello, Jess. Hello, Pat. It was Peter Fogg on the other side. Hey, this wretched wind, he said. Blowing trees down all over the place. Don't worry, Pat. I'll soon shift it. I'll nip down the forestry place and borrow their machine. No wonder it blew over. It's rotten. Peter was soon back with the log lifter and a power saw. Now then, we'll soon cut our way through. Stand back, these things don't half go. I'll just get these branches out of the way, Peter. Now then, let's see if we can move the pieces. Phew, it's warm work.
Mm, should be able to get through there, said Pat. Then went for his van. But it had gone. Oh! Where could it be? There it was, safe and sound. It was just along the road, next to Sam's mobile shop. I moved your van down the road, said Sam. I could see your new paint was going to get scratched with all these branches flying about. Thanks, said Pat. It is smart, isn't it? Royal crown and all. Cheerio, Sam. Cheerio! Thanks, Peter. Cheerio! We'll have to get a move on now, Jess. Now what? Ouch! My hat! Come here. Oh, no. I'll never catch it now. It's that cable again. I'll soon fix that. There was nobody about at the village school. Have they all been blown away? The children were out enjoying the wind. But the wind wanted to deliver the letters. in all directions. The children helped to find them. One letter was stuck in a tree. Careful! It would be an airmail letter. What a day! Hold them tightly. I think they're all air letters today. Bill Thompson took them to the headmaster. And Pat waved goodbye.
Pat was blown about the valley all morning with his letters and parcels. It was almost the end of his windy round when he saw a flying towel. It was one of Granny Dryden's. He went to help her catch her washing. Oh, Pat, she said, this wind's terrible. You are a dear. I'd never have caught it all by myself. Look, there's more over there. Now we've got my washing, what about your hat? It blew off miles away and sailed down a stream. Good gracious, said Granny Dryden. Ted Glenn said he'd hooked a postman's hat out of the lake. I didn't see how it could be yours. Look, he popped it on the old scarecrow to dry. It looks like mine. It is mine. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Scarecrow. Time to blow home, said Pat. There was a thick fog in Greendale. Pat had to go slowly along the winding lanes. Someone waved to him, but he couldn't make out who it was. Uh, good morning, he shouted. He was late when he reached the village post office. Good morning, Mrs. Goggins. Sorry I'm late. No need to hurry, said Mrs. Goggins. There's no sign of the letters yet. It'll be this nasty fog. Come and sit yourself down and have a nice cup of tea. Thank you. That'll be lovely after that foggy drive, said Pat. I'll just brew up. Ah, that's lovely. Pat was just getting warm and comfortable and Mrs. Goggins was just bringing the tea and biscuits when ping went the shop's doorbell. It's early for a customer, said Mrs. Goggins. That's a good cup of tea, said Pat. But Mrs. Goggins came in with the mail bag. It's here, she said. What, already? How did he get through so quickly? There's no fog down at Pencaster. It's only in Greendale. So he's not as late as we thought he'd be. Just as I'd picked my favourite biscuit. Oh well, no time for that now. I'd better get on my way. Hold on, Mrs Goggins. I'll give you a hand. He helped to sort the letters. Not too many today, thank goodness, with all this fog about. Goodbye. Oh, and thanks for the tea. Mind how you go. <laughs> it's as thick as ever out here. Pat knew the Greendale roads well enough, but they looked different in the fog and his lights weren't much help.
He must have taken a wrong turn somewhere, so he stopped by a signpost to find out where he was. Oh dear, it wasn't a signpost, only a crossroads sign. Now what? Pat didn't know which way to go. He walked along the lane, trying to see through the fog. I can't see a thing. Oh, I'd better not lose sight of the van. Hey, dear, even my glasses are fogged up. Then he saw someone standing in the field. Why is he so still? It must be Ted Glenn out after rabbits. He'll know the way. I'll pop over with his letter and ask him. Pat walked up very quietly so as not to disturb the rabbits and touched Ted on the shoulder. Ted didn't move. Pat put the letter in Ted's pocket. He still didn't move. Pat gave him a nudge. Oh, it was a scarecrow. Pat did feel silly. He was glad no one saw him. <laughs> Sorry, Scarecrow. The letter isn't for you. And I don't suppose you can tell me the way in this fog. Goodbye. He was just wondering what to do when he saw some lights coming through the fog. It was Alf Thompson on his tractor. Luckily, he wasn't lost. He soon showed Pat which way to go. Pat was on his way again. He saw Sam's mobile shop parked at the side of the road. Hello, Sam. <coughs> this fog gets in your throat, doesn't it? Have you got any cough sweets? Uh, these'll do the trick, said Sam. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. <coughs> Cheerio. The next stop was at the church. Hello, Pat. Isn't this fog ghastly? said the Reverend Timms. Don't know how you found your way. What a day for choir practice. But I expect Miss Hubbard will come. <laughs> Nothing stops her. Thanks, Pat. Go carefully and trust in the Lord. Goodbye. Cheerio, Reverend. When Pat got back to his van, he saw that Jess had gone. Pat looked everywhere. Where could that cat be? Perhaps he'd gone looking for rabbits. Pat set out to seek Jess. He called and called. Jess! Jess, where are you? Jess! Come on, Jess! Hippus, push, push, push! Jess! Jess! Push, 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 push! Jess! Come on, Jess! Oh! Come on, Jess, this is no time for hide and seek. 
Oh! Push, 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 push. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Ooh. Where have you been, Jess? This is no time to wander off. Come on. Pat was lost again. Now you've done it, Jess. We're really lost this time. Let's try this way. He couldn't even find the road, let alone his van. Miss Hubbard passed the van on the way to the church. No Pat, and no Jess. What could have happened to them? <whistles> Hello, Vicar. Have you seen Pat? His van's in the road, but there's no sign of him or his cat. Oh, dear. Pat called quite some time ago. They must be lost in the fog. I know what we must do, said Miss Hubbard. We must ring the bells to guide them back to the church. Come along, Reverend. Paul. I wonder why the church bells are ringing. They don't usually ring for choir practice. Still, they're as good as a foghorn. We'll soon find the way now. There's Pat now. Hello, Reverend. Hello, Miss Hubbard. <laughs> it's a good thing you rang those bells. We were completely lost. Never mind, we're all right now. The Lord is our guide, said the Reverend. Come and have some tea. There's plenty in the pot. Thanks, just what I need said Pat. There was some milk for Jess. Look, said Miss Hubbard. It's much lighter outside. The sun was shining and a breeze had blown the fog away. Ah, that's much better, said Pat. Now I can get on with my letters. Come on, Jess. Cheerio. Farewell. Bye, Pat. It was lovely driving along in the sunshine <laughs> without getting lost. Look, Jess, <laughs> that scarecrow's still waiting for a letter. One morning, Miss Hubbard, who was always up bright and early, was surprised to see Pat's van still outside his house. Goodness me, Pat should be away by now. I wonder what's wrong. Pat, are you there? Pat! Pat! Gooeep! You! Pat, it's late! Ah, oh, 
There you are. Still in bed, Pat? What about the post? Oh, dear. Is it that late? I must have overslept. Wretched alarm clock. Morning, Pat. Must go or I'll be late as well. Pat rushed out without any breakfast. I'd better get my skates on. They'll all wonder where I've got to. Oh, no! My hat! Come on, Jess. Don't just sit there. Oh! What are you playing at, Jess? Do you think you're Postman Jess or something? Come on, let's get moving. What a start to the day. That alarm clock couldn't have gone off. We're over an hour late already. It was past nine o'clock at the post office. I wonder why Pat is so late, said Mrs Goggins. Anyway, it gives me time to repair this parcel. Is that him? Oh! It's not my day today, is it? Good morning, Mrs Goggins. Sorry I'm late. It's that alarm clock. Didn't go off, you know. As bad as this parcel. Just look at it. I do wish people would wrap them up properly. This is a right old mess. Can I help? Oh, my hat. This stuff sticks to everything. Gosh, it's all over my fingers. Ooh, yuck. That's really sticky. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh. oh, dear. You're as bad as me today. All thumbs. There you are. I think it will hold. It's just one of those days, said Pat. Thank you. Wish me luck. I need it today. There's Ted. That messy parcel is for him. We'll give it to him before it falls to bits. Hi, Ted. Got a parcel for you. Ted! Oh, hello, Pat. Is that my parcel? It'll be those spare parts I ordered. Whoops! Oh, no! Dozens of nuts and bolts, cogs and screws rolled away into the grass. Oh, dear. I'll never find them all. Not in this long grass. Hold on. I'll give you a hand. That's one bit. But what about all the others? Bill Thompson had just set out from home on his way to the village when he saw Pat and Ted searching for something in the grass. Have you lost something? He said. Yes, a lot of nuts and bolts. I've got just the thing for that at home. I'll go and get it. I'll be back in a minute. <laughs> we'll still be here, said Ted. What's he on about? said Pat. <laughs> Search me. Is this one of them? Mm, no, looks like a rusty nail. <laughs> like this. Rubbish. We're getting nowhere. I know. Look, the lad's back already. And he's got a magnet with him. <laughs> Hope it's a good one or it won't be much use. 
Have you found much? said Bill. Well, no, not yet. This is really powerful. Picks up anything metal. You have a try. Oh, thanks. It started to pick up all the metal bits from the grass, as well as Pat's glasses. Over here, said Ted. I hope they're all there, said Pat. I'll count them, said Ted. Thanks, Pat. Cheerio. Dunno, Pat. Thanks for your help. Here's another bit. Thanks, Bill. That magnet came in handy. <laughs> what a day, said Pat to Jess. We'll never get through at this rate. His next stop was Thompson Ground. Alf was busy mending the barn wall. Morning, Alf. Sorry I'm late. Got some letters for you. Just leave them on the table. Dorothy's away feeding the chickens. Nothing urgent, is there? No, just a few bills. Oops! Hey, up, what are you doing? Sorry, Alf. Hang on. Hold it steady! Not that way, the other way. I said the other way! Oh! Ouch! Oh, my hand. Oh, it does hurt. Ah! Oh, gosh, that's painful. You all right, Pat? Oh, dear. Well, don't move. I'll go and get something for it. Just then, Mrs. Thompson came back from feeding the chickens. Dear me, whatever have you been up to, Pat? Not looking where I was going, I'm afraid. Walking into ladders. You mustn't make it a habit. Now hold still and I'll bind it up for you. But you won't be able to drive today, you know. You'll have to rest it. Thanks, but what about all my letters? said Pat. Just then, Sam Waldron drove his mobile shop into the farmyard. He noticed Pat's bandaged hand. Hello, what happened to you? They told him about Pat's accident and that he was unable to drive. Why don't we put your letters and parcels in my van? said Sam. We can do our rounds together. Yes, and then the post will get through after all, said Pat. Thanks, Sam. That's a marvellous idea. Come on, Jess. You'll be all right in there. Thanks, Alf. That's the lot now. We'd better get Dr. Gilbertson to take a look at that wrist, said Sam. It was their first stop anyway. Won't be long. Hello, Pat. Goodness me, what have you been doing? It's my wrist. Come on in. Let's have a look at it. Ouch! Is this where it hurts? Ouch! Ah, well, it's not broken. You'll be all right in a day or two. I'll just give you something to soothe it. You'll soon be able to drive. 
Oh, thanks, Doctor. Cheerio. Bye. No need to worry. Nothing broken. For twice a week there comes a mobile shop up to the valley. valley. And folks are delighted when he comes around. For it always will save a long journey to town from the valley. The valley, he's always on time as he rings out his chime in the valley. valley. Mothers can plan with a great shopping list. If he cut out his service, oh, he'd be terribly missed in the valley. The valley. What the people will want in the valley. valley He buys in the town Then he takes things around All his customers know that He won't let them down In the valley The valley Thanks for the lift, Sam. It's been a funny old day, but tomorrow, well, tomorrow's another day. That's the stuff, Bat. Postman, postman, Bat, can you guess what's in his bag? Is there a letter? Meow. Is there a parcel? Meow. Is there a postcard? Just the cat.